Let's pray it up and we'll get going. All right. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for the opportunity to, to study your word. We thank you for the fact that you extend your grace and mercy to us throughout the course of our, our weeks and days. And above all, Lord, I pray that you just allow us to study in such a fashion that we equip ourselves through the Holy Spirit to do whatever we need to this coming week and do it in good stead of you. Be with the ones that are on that list, Lord. Be with David's mom. And I pray that you be with the ones that might be traveling for the holidays and ones that have moved to other classes. Just keep them fresh in our minds and let us lift them in prayer whenever it's necessary. But above all, Lord, I pray that you just be with the ones that show up next week on their particular Easter Sunday to get a dose of Jesus, that they might have an encounter with the Holy Spirit that would change their lives and their eternity forever. And we ask all these things in Christ's precious name. Amen. All right. Here you go. Easter Day, the veil between time and eternity thins to gossamer. Now for all the sowers, gossamer is a fabric. To all the biologists, gossamer is that thin spun web from a spider that allows it to drift over and start a web somewhere. That is what it is to me. I don't worry about thin fabric, but I do like spiders. <clears throat> and why does it tell you this? What is the what are they meant by that between time and eternity? If you ponder it. Time has boundaries. Eternity Time has boundaries. Eternity does not. And let me ask you a question. Anybody ever look through a spider web? Yeah, of course. What do you see? Whatever's on the other side. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> That's what this is leaning into. Every time an Easter comes by, you are closer and closer and closer to the return of Jesus Christ. And that thing just gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier and skinnier to where that is going to become that and we will be in the presence of our Christ. That's what they're talking about. Although I like the spider part a bit better. So, all right. There you go. Now, where are we be? Um, 258, number four. 258. I don't have that. I go up to 252, or 253. 253? That's the one I've got. That's good. We're oh, you're, you're got the, you, you, you didn't get the new one. No. Thank you. Yes, sir. No problem. Anybody else All right. Here we go. I'm all messed up. He's in the wrong door now. He doesn't know where he's at. We're working with imputed righteousness. That's all of us. The imputation of divine righteousness, the moment of faith in Christ, is the way God can justify or vindicate any member of the human race. This is me. This is God. We can't get together on any plane at all. Ever. until I become plus R. That's the only way it happens. Um, I was listening to Zachariah, Robbie Zachariah the other day in his apologetics, and he was talking about um, how people get angry about all the people on this side of, well, we call it religion because that's what the world calls it and all the people on this side that can be positive, and all the people over here that, quote unquote, prior to knowing anything about Christ, knowing anything about the law, knowing anything about anything, they all died and went to hell. The only problem is, you can't take the first chapter of Romans and use that as an excuse, because these people right here, prior to all the law knowledge and all the grace knowledge and all that kind of stuff, they could still look around and know that something was taking place and somebody was running the universe. Well, we were discussing last week that it's, it's in them from the get-go. Correct. It is implanted in you. But then, then there's also chosen and not chosen. 
Correct. They decided not to pay any attention to it or not to um, put any stock in it. So even speak. if we don't understand how he did it for those people, the Bible mm -hmm. just comes out and says, don't sweat it. He said, Every, nobody has no excuse. Correct. Exactly. They, these folks, and that you can see these are him, without excuse. And that you can see him in his handiwork. Excuse. Okay. Yeah, that's what this is. And this group over here is looking for rationality. Okay. They're trying to figure out some way not to believe it. <laughs> I mean, that's just the only way you can, can look at it. Now, number five on that list. Justification then is the possession of divine righteousness. All right. This is me. I now am the plus R critter. And now that I'm plus R, all kinds of stuff becomes available to me. And for the basis of eternal relationship with God and the blessings from God. So I'm plus R and blessings. Okay. That's me. That's you. That's everybody. And armor. And armor. Well, you didn't have to write it down. No, no, no. That's okay. There you go. The only way you can possibly accept armor is if you're plus R. I know a lot of people that think they know the Lord, never had an encounter with the Lord, but they've heard somebody say, I have to put my armor on every time. Every morning I get up and put my armor on. Exactly. I said, for what purpose? I don't know, but somebody told me to do it. <laughs> okay, so what do you do? It's an opportunity to explain. I had the lady that I worked for that gave me the book on angels, and I nicely told her I already had a book on angels, <laughs> called the Bible, okay? Yesterday she was using the term, I don't know why God's doing this to me. And I said, yeah, I didn't think you believed in God. I was beating around the bush, okay? <laughs> yeah. And she said, well, why is he doing all this? All these things happening. I said, excuse me. You live in a house that's 30 years old that has some really wacky designs in it, and you just you you design a headache to happen 30 years later. Because she, and so what she finally determined was that maybe the Lord didn't do this. I said, well, what do you know about the Lord would make you think that He did do this? Well, if if you know, He is so cool to figure out what people is in their head, well, I don't know what I did wrong. She thought she had made a mistake. She thought she had stepped over some boundary and that the Lord was going to hit her with the big hammer. Yes, ma'am. What kind of things were that she was saying? Oh, um, number one, the air conditioning quit on the house. The rocks on the parapet wall, there's a turret on the up front of the house that's all cobblestones and the water's run on the cobblestones and rotted the whole inside of the house out. And then the windows were all leaking and the bottom of the sills on these zillion dollar windows was all rotten. Just normal junk that happens in Florida. But when it all seems to happen at one time, you would like to have somebody to blame other than yourself. You must God's a really good card to pull out because he's not going to boo you. You must have drove by our house to get to that. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's only one description. Of that. <laughs> yeah. There's probably oodles of homes around the island and, and, and Coco that are that way. But the thing of it is, is they want to associate it with something that's above and beyond them which gave me an opportunity to ask her, I said, well, Mrs. Stewart, have you ever had an encounter with Jesus Christ? And she said, well, what kind of encounter? And I said, that's called no. And from that point on, we had a conversation. I said, do me a favor. Put your book on Angels Away and all the other books that you have that tell you how to do it and pick up the Bible. And then as you pick up the Bible and read it in the morning, I'll be back to work on the house until it falls down. Let me know what questions you have. And she said, seriously, I said, as serious as a heart attack. Please do. I said, because you're going to check out of this world, and I would like to know that I'm going to see you again. And she said, well, really? I said, most definitely. And she said, you know, what women get all teary-eyed and mess up the neighborhood. <laughs> And she said, you're serious? I said, please, write them down, and we will approach every one of them as you, as you come across them. And it's just the way it works. Seems to be a general trait with the human creature in general. You know, all these people that are building their homes in some of the most dangerous places in the world in America, <laughs> and then something yeah. happens, and yeah, they say, well, why is God doing yeah. me this way? Yeah, well, right. lady, what part of the fact that you're 
and the bottom of a cliff and you got landslides, did you not understand when you right. bought that house? Yeah, you could be at the bottom of the hill instead of the top of the hill. But that's, you know, that's just mankind itself. That's, it, that's what you're I'm living on, a, on an earth that's wearing out. What are you going to do? So, now, number six, justification here is salvation relationship with the integrity of God. That's what justification... That's why I remember I told you salvation is a half word. It's a half. The whole word is justification. Okay, because justification does one thing for you. It puts the salvation experience and the blessing experience together and creates a unit. The unit that, that vindicates God. Salvation, uh, let me put it this way. If you, were, if you were not saved, you had something. What? You knew you were going to hell. If you get saved and don't have anything after salvation, you're just kind of in limbo. There's nothing there. So what do you have to do? You have to wait for the rest of the package instantaneously, I might add. But what you have is salvation shows up and instantaneously you're justified. Then you become plus R and this stuff just all starts rolling. That's exactly how it's put together. Salvation without the justification is useless. Like it's just another form of hell. Well, yeah, it really is. I mean, it, it really is. I, I emptied myself out of what I thought I had and I have put nothing back in to replace it. As a matter of fact, what did happen to the guy that did that in the Bible? He had a demon chased out of him, did not replace it with Jesus Christ, <coughs> so what did he get in return? An empty Seven clean more. house that ended up with a whole lot more. A whole lot of the, of the other one. buzzards came rushing back in to fill the void. There's a void. God knows it, so instantaneously as you, as you step over that line, justification fills up that void. The justification is, I have now, now I have one half, of God. I have his, his righteousness. In fact, I have his righteousness opens every territory that he owns. Um, as a matter of fact, you can even be bold in saying that when I am plus R, I am guaranteed, okay, blessings. Now, there are caveats with that because of subjunctive. What do I mean? The potential for blessings is in everyone that accepts Jesus Christ. It depends, demands you to study his word, live his word, experientially apply his word, and come back to him and report. And what do I say by report? When you step off the line, what do you do? You report back in. Stepped off the line, I'm here to, to identify I stepped off the line. I want to be back and talk. I want to be back and hook up with you. I want the flow to come again, and I want it to be that way. All right. Number seven. Justification is not forgiveness. For, forgiveness is subtraction. Justification is addition. So salvation, pre that, is a subtraction of something. What's it subtracting? It's subtracting sins. What do you got over here? You got the positive side of it. You're adding things, blessings, uh, everything that goes with with a functional Christian life. How many of you? Know your prayers are answered. I know it one way or the other. There's <laughs> <laughs> like a lapse there for a moment. Yes, no, or maybe. No, no, no. I mean, that's, it's, it truly is important, okay? Yeah. No, no, no. I, they, they are, but not on your terms. Oh, God, Lord, no. No, there's, there's a different calendar entirely with that. Well, this goes the same with blessings. I mean, just your definition of blessing and his are more than likely different. Well, let me, let me put it this way. I want quicker returns. Everybody does. All right, now how do I get quicker returns? Do it his way. Do it his way. <clears throat> Would you Let please... Closer it. to the source, quicker with the return. Would you please illuminate me on the third condition? First is salvation, second is justification, and the third are people who God has to work with for a while, the carnal Christian. Um, no, 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 no. Listen to me. I want you to understand something. This package is perfect the way it is. If you're, if, you, if you're a remedial Christian, okay, you just pick stuff up really slow. He does not have a clock on you. Do you know why I can say that? Because here's Bobby at 12, and here's Bobby at 65. Did I know any of the junk in between there? Did he know any of the junk in between there? Oh, yes. Did he know you would eventually know all the junk in between there? Oh, yeah. He did. And he was just tickled about it. You know, I, I, I understand he has a sense of humor. 
You know, he really does. He took your eye and your ear. I know. <laughs> half of them. Yeah, I still am. I'm still half. Okay? All right? Only this half is righteous. I don't know where that half is at. All right? Try that. But the thing of it is, with all of this, he all knew that, so he doesn't have that concern. All right? I'll give you a good one. Um, Donnie. Okay? Perfect example. I come to a job. The guy says, I need a tile guy. I say, okay, I'll call Donnie. I call Donnie. Donnie picks up after the answering machine. And I first talk to Thomas. Yeah. And then Donnie. And then finally I get to Donnie. And then the Donnie gets the other guy's number. He calls the other guy's number. Da 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 da. Truckloads of steps. What does he tell me? Uh, I'm done with the job on Wednesday. And I just told the Lord, what do I do after that? That day. He stepped into this right here. Now, what kind of prayer is that? I'll tell you what kind of prayer that is. That's a prayer under the umbrella of a mature Christian. Your maturity in Christ guarantees slop over into people's lives that you don't have any clue about. You just, you just pass the information on. And that's what I was talking about with the fact that his blessing might not be yours. It's, All that's a blessing. It is. And it's not necessarily to you. No, I don't, and, and I don't care. Why? Because it's all part of the same family. Right. <coughs> okay? If you go buy a new car and it has a new smell, I am just as happy for you as climbing into my old truck and smelling yesterday's coffee that hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you understand that? I don't think I am, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right? I am just so tickled <laughs> that, that, that the Lord would just bless these people that, that are part of... Of, of an ark that I see all the time. It's just, I just think it's absolutely wonderful. Okay? And, and I mean, that's part of Christ in you. There's no jealousy. There's no envy. You know, any of that. I, I think the situation that happened with you and Donnie ties in with what you were talking about a few weeks ago where you say, you know, you get up every day and you say, okay, these are my plans for the day. <laughs> yes. So what are your, you know, fit your plans in. So exactly. both of you had listened to what the Lord had planned. You know, you talked to him about it, I'm Correct. guessing, because it worked out. Correct. And he ordered it so that it worked out. The timing mm -hmm. worked out perfectly. But mm -hmm. if you hadn't done that, it would have just been one. And you would tell you what the timing the should have been? I was supposed to go to a job in Cocoa, but the people weren't home, and they called me and said, we won't be home, go to another job. And I went to that job. <laughs> okay, so all I'm telling you is, you and I think this is some kind of random doodle. I am telling you, it is as straight as an ever-loving arrow, and it's just a blast, you know, to have it go whizzing by. And, and it's fun to see, because he says, look, I've got all this stuff, you're justified, you're mine, please understand, I don't need you dinking with the edges of this thing, I've got it well in hand. Okay. You know, I was thinking about that gap you're talking about, the stuff in between. <laughs> right here. I, was, I, was, I was thinking about, about 15 years ago when Mr. Eldrick was explaining to me what carnal man meant. <laughs> <laughs> and how far I've come in that gap. And now I are one. <laughs> right. I mean, the thing of it is, is, now that you've got hindsight, you can see how the Lord puts stuff together. Why did he give you the information? You didn't need it then. You needed it when you had to verify it. And that's basically what it amounts to. And that's what's fun about the whole thing. Now, number eight. Forgiveness subtracts sin. Justification adds God's righteousness. To be forgiven is not salvation, but it total, must be total package. God does not bless you because your sins are forgiven. Understand that? Please understand that. That's not always what you hear from the pulpit. Okay? <coughs> Well, Which they are, uh, they are forgiven, but that's not what's going on here. It well, is like way up here, and we're down here in the dirt, all right? But because he imputes you with his righteousness, that's what gives you the, the best part of salvation. Is that the justification? Not illuminating the dirt. How many of you think your house is clean? <laughs> <laughs> Understand something. Define clean. If, <laughs> define clean. If you look it up, it has Marianne on it. Oh. That's what the definition is. Why? Because it's important to her. Okay? But listen to me. I'll guarantee you I could go somewhere in the house and find dirt. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, looking all, I'm looking all the time, don't worry. But the theme of it is... is we will cater to ourselves. <laughs> right. But the theme of it is, what I'm telling you is, just because it looks clean doesn't mean it is clean. But when you come to Christ, everything is clean. There are no corners. There's no little grubby sections. The moment you step into him, you're his. Now, you might have to do some work on, on the earth suit to keep it that way, but it's there. And that's the, the fun part. If somebody's, you know, really puffed up because they're, they're clean in Jesus Christ, I'm sure you can dissuade them pretty quickly. Follow them around for a day. You know, you can rework their, their, their storyline. So that's all I'm talking about. But it says, but because he imputes his with his righteousness, this produces blessing. Righteousness is a cup. Got to have a cup for it to overflow. All right? That's what they need to teach you when they teach you my cup runneth over. <clears throat> All right. David had a cup. He told you about the cup all the time. He didn't have the security of having the cup, but he had the cup. Because he always said, don't take yourself away from me. Well, we don't have to say that. We constantly have a cup. And Christ had the cup too, but it was a cup of wrath. Well, there they go. But it was because that was the job. That yeah, exactly. Well, Jesus exactly. said, my cup runneth over though. Yeah. And why is that? Because David knew who, who owned the cup. And he knew who put the cup. He knew who was filling the cup. He knew that the stuff that fell out of the cup was going to get on everybody else. That's all there is to it. He didn't know it was Jesus. No. Well, no, he, he didn't know it was, was Christ. No. No. Right. But you have to understand, you and I now know the triune God is all there. They knew the triune God. They just didn't identify it that way. And anytime you praise God, who are you praising? The one that you can see. Christ. Christ. That's the thing. Everybody says, well, I've never seen God. Well, all those folks back in Bible times, they 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 never seen God either. But they sure saw part of God. They saw God in human form as best as he could portray it, which was perfect. I think the Bible says the only one there was that ever got close to yeah. seeing him was Moses, and he only saw his backside. Yeah, and he saw a shadow. Yeah. Now, let me explain something to you. What did he see? Use your ever-loving head. What did he see go by as a shadow? Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that God the Father is a spirit. He can't be seen. There you go. But they don't push it that way. But we're no. not allowed to see him, right? I, mean, I don't think I want... Behind the curtain? And the well, curtain. and I don't know that I can And I don't know what the spirit world looks like, so I don't know how I could. That's kind of the way I sort of picture it. It's like we're not allowed to see him, so I'm sending myself in the form of my son... So I'm like them. Well, I would say that the not allow part is because anything that has sin in it is instantly consumed the moments in the presence of God. Because God said Himself that Except no man Satan. can see me and live. Right. So you were going to say something. When we get to heaven, do we see God when we just see Jesus? You see Jesus, heaven. correct. So God be in heaven. In God heaven. is wherever. God, no, God's everywhere. But the thing of it is, is you have to understand, God is not a physical. Um, we can find something no, hang on. No, no, we no. don't understand. Anybody see my spirit? <laughs> it needs a shave. You see it? Anywhere else? <laughs> you see it's it? Yeah, no? no? Okay. That's God. Can't see him. You know he exists. At least I know in my head. The world's having a hard time with it, but I do. <laughs> but you can't see him. So he said, all right, I've got a problem with this I can't see it thing, and I've made a real world. So I'm going to send my son which is really me, down to the world and turn him into a human being so everybody has a physical look at him. You have to understand, even though he did that, it didn't satisfy everybody. Then I'm going to go back to the Holy Spirit side of it. Now he said, I'm putting the Holy Spirit in. I'm going away. I'm going to park myself up in heaven. But not really going away. Not really going away. That's right. He's still hanging out. All right. But he sends the Holy Spirit that is more interactive with you. Uh, anybody done that visual thing material that you put on your face yet? I don't think I can do it because I don't think you can do it with one eye. The, the virtual oh. reality. The, yeah, the visual world. Yeah. Well, they have those. They have the the drone um, races with those headsets on. That's basically what you've got going with God. He said, "I'm going to send Christ down. I'm going to put this headset on, and you're going to see everything that I see through His eyes." Is basically what it amounts to. Every every little nip, turn, whip, whap, nip. You know all this. That's how you see it. But he's comfortable with it. Why? Because it's him. 
Because Jesus himself said, he said, God and I are one. Exactly. And that's what you've got going. And that's why with this kind of stuff here, it talks about it. This, is a, this produces blessing. Righteousness is a cup. You have to have the cup to have it overflow. Justification refers then to salvation adjustment to the justice of God. You have gone positive volition over here, and now you've got a plus R individual over here. Now, how do you make a plus R carnal? By being hard-headed. Eh, somewhat. Basically, turn your back on doctrine. Okay? Well, I was going to say uh, a true plus R, because a true plus R that goes away never was in the first place. Right, but that's, and I, you and I can't tell that, but I do know that if I'm a plus R and I'm off the reservation, you are a miserable Christian. Plus, you're out from underneath I his umbrella. Uh, you're on, out from underneath his umbrella, and that allows well, things to happen to exactly. you that he's not protecting you well, from. Well, like I said, Jesus Christ walked this planet in the divine dinosphere the whole time. Never made a bad decision, never made a bad thought, always talked to the Father when he needed to, always responded to what the Father told him, did all, of, did all the prototype things we need to do while we're walking planet Earth without a sin nature. But he said, I have to experience it in some fashion because you have got to know that I'm a good guy sitting on the chair in heaven, okay? Your advocate has to know what you went through. So that's what they're talking about here. And with all of these things going on here, with this, the plus R deal, that's what they're talking about. All right, now, it says, here's what I was talking about before. Justification refers then to salvation adjustment to the justice of God. At the moment of faith in Christ, God imputes each one of us with his righteousness. A five-carat diamond. Remember I talked about it before? You got a five-carat diamond when you stepped into Jesus Christ, but for some good, really good reason to you, somebody gave you a 10-cent piece of cut glass and said, here, if you'll wear this, you'll look just like the guy with the five-carat diamond. And you buy the package. <coughs> oh, no, I don't want to wear a real diamond. I would rather, much rather wear this piece of cut glass. Basically, what you've done when you when you turn away from what you have in Christ, why anybody would do it, I have no clue. Because they probably think, you know, I'm doing this. <laughs> well, very possible. You know, rather very, than letting God. I would bless imagine self righteousness has a big piece of it, and I would imagine that's how it's set up. All right, foolish part. When you got the diamond first, why do you think you can impress God when you should be impressed with what God did for you? How many of you can make a more perfect? Christ. Anybody got that ability? Why do we try to do that then? To be like him. To be like him. We want to be like him. We want to duplicate him. But what happens when we go off the reservation? We step into the law. You have to have a list. I have to do something to be like him. No. Put everything down and you are him. Bobby, I have to ask a very important question uh -oh. at this time. Because we are not everything God wants us to become before we die, when we're saved, He spends His life, our life, as long as He gives us, right. working on us. So a person can still not be, I mean, he can be saved and justified, but he can still, God is working on him through his life. Okay, all right. I mean, I'm not perfect when I'm saved, therefore... There's things that are still wrong with me that God has to iron out. Well, that's okay. Would that's, you call that a carnal Christian? That's, no, that's the Holy Spirit's job. No, that's a natural natural man. Natural man is trying to do it. And the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to lead you into all truth. What's truth going to do for you? Have any clue? Set you free. Set you free. Set you free. <clears throat> and you know what free is? Do you know why they say that? Do you know what you're free from? The law. You realize that? That's all that verse is talking about. Nobody can put any constraints on you in truth. Um, how do I... How do I put it in, in, in a different term? Um, hey, Bobby, you're, you're, uh, you are free from the penalty of sin. Correct. Correct. You're free from the penalty of sin, but the thing of it is, is that happens the moment you step into Jesus. So the minute you're salvation and justified, what happens? You're free from, you're free from, free from the power of sin. Now, when you, when you, but the truth itself frees you from any lists. 
It also frees you from the from anything. Uh, how many of you feel? How many of you have guilt complexes about stuff you did? Okay, what brings that about? What brings it about? Like a reminder? Uh, is it a reminder to you of something you did in the past, or yeah, or you got a list of things you really want to do that are bad in the in the future, or what? Yeah, it's a reminder of the past. Just the past. That I regret. All right, <laughs> that you regret. Okay, now what is the benefit of that regret? Learn from it. That should be the only thing that there should be from. There should be nothing else. There should be no regrets as far as, because please understand something. If, if I get this right, the steps of a righteous man, woman, Christian are what? Ordered by the Lord. So, Barbara was bad. Again? So he gave her me. And then there was John. <laughs> okay. What happens in that scenario? Nothing good. <laughs> we got little people. They're good. That's true. All right. So what happens? Barbara's bad, and Barbara has Jesus now. So Barbara wants to hang on to that and carry it on and carry it on and carry it on and carry it on. Is there any of that on here? Does he bring any of it up? No, only you do. Here's the deal. You've been justified. What does that tell you? You've been imputed with righteousness. Since you've been imputed with righteousness, Romans 8, 1. Okay? I think it's more like a, a deep sorry, a deep regret. Okay. You know, like we always try to, you know, we want to make our, our Heavenly Father proud of us. You know, we do, we do to a degree. To a degree, to yes. To a degree. To a degree. I'm not like through acts. Something. I'm not saying through acts. Okay. But it's a fine line to try to verbalize this. Correct. But I know when I go off the reservation, I'm really sorry. Well, and, and that's, I relive that's, it. It's that's fine. Like I need to show him. I swear I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But isn't that a work? No, it not, is a work. No, it is. It's it, absolutely. It, 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 but the, the, but the deal is this. Yourself. Here's yeah. the deal. What you need to do to put in your mind the first place is if you're off the reservation, okay? Reservation up here, and you're off. All right? Christ died for it. There are no accoutrements to it. Nothing hanging off of it. And I nothing know that. to be well, okay, so you just have to keep telling yourself that the sorry thing is nothing but a physical and a sin nature thing that your body says, I'll bet I can put you under bondage of some kind. Just give me half a chance and I'll do it. And bingo, he does because I, I I concern myself. And here's the deal. I, it doesn't mean that you go out and sin cavalierly. But understand that when you do go off the reservation, and I'm telling you right now, there's a whole lot bigger list of I think it's a sin than there are sins. Okay? I think we put a lot of stuff in a sin category that God does not put in a sin category, and henceforth Satan can beat the tar out of us with it. I think there are things that are sins that remain sins until, do me a favor. until we deal with the Holy Spirit. Do me a favor and look up the things that the Lord hates. Yeah. Pride. Well, see, I look at this okay. as a form of confession and repentance. That's fine. Right. In her brain. That's right. fine. That's wonderful. But it's the residual hook that gets left behind after that initial confession <clears throat> and repentance. Okay. So Metanoia means what? Change of mind. Change of mind. Right. So once okay. you do that, flush it. Flush it. Yes. It should be gone. Okay? And the reason I tell you that is because, remember it talks about, how many of you have ever run cross country? Anybody ever run cross country? No. Anything over 100 yards dashes. Okay. Of I used to run cross country. <laughs> yeah, but she caught him. <laughs> Anybody run across the yard? Okay. <laughs> you we get one of those? Okay. Okay, you did that one. All right. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Running cross country, you are down to bare nothing. Skinny little britches, shoes as light as you can get. A uh, shirt that blows dry all the time. No hats, no nothing. Why are you doing that? So the you don't want to carry it. You don't want to carry anything extra. That's what you're doing. What, and Paul says, you run the race to win it. You can't win it with every time you make a boo-boo, you throw a five-pound rock in your backpack and say, I'm pretty sure I can keep up with everybody up there that's not doing that. It's still our human nature. It is. But, how, but, but what am I telling you? Christ can overcome your human nature. 
That's the problem. That's what we're wrestling with all the time. I, have, I wrestle with it. I get so mad at myself for stupid mistakes sometimes that nobody wants to be around me. True? Yeah. Okay, and it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. All right? Yes, ma'am. It's part of bringing every thought captive. Correct. I mean, that's Correct. why we have to do it, because our old nature doesn't comment how do you, on how do, you, how do you captivate something? How do you catch it? You trap it. Stop yourself in the act of realizing trap what it. you're doing. Yes. What do you do? How do you now? trap a possum that's in the, in, in, just trying to get in the chicken coop? I'm not doing it myself. Well, I got a 22 that traps them pretty good. But how do you normally do it? You put a box out and you put some kind of bait in it. All right, what kind of bait are you putting in your box? There you go. You're going to put divine knowledge, which is called doctrine, in your box. What are you going to do? You're going to take that thought and run it right into that divine, divine doctrine, and you're going to let the trap fall on it, and it's in there, and it can't do a thing to you, it can't bother you, can't get to the chickens, can't get to the eggs, can't get to the food, nothing. That's what you're trying to learn to do. That's why he gave you... How long are you going to live, Barbara? 125? Oh, something around that. Okay, all right. Here's the deal. Now, she's, she's only 29, okay, so she's got a lot of years to go. So, all right? You see what I'm saying? So what, what am I going to do with that time? Learn. Don't beat yourself up for the next 100 years because you don't have to. He said, I've got it all. I've got it all. When I do a boo-boo... I'm learning more and more and more. Hand it to him and get on with it. I'm a nice, I'm sorry person, though. I understand I will that. drive somebody nuts. No, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just part of my nature. I and i got to learn how to let it go. You do. I mean, and, I transfer it up. And, and oh, that's sorry. okay. I'm sorry. You can do that. But the thing of it is, is what I'm telling you is it doesn't hurt to say you're sorry. But melancholies have a tendency to do what? Well, obsess. Okay? Why? It's <laughs> you see that piece of dirt right there? That's sorry. Get out of here, we. Because it wasn't in our plan. But, but, but you understand, yes. But the thing is, is, with all of this, Christ knows exactly what you are. He's got you nailed right to the barn door, and he says, here's where you are. Give it to me. Don't beat yourself up over it. Use your kindness, use your mercy, hence Donnie, for things that I will put in your place to use them for. Don't worry about trying to offend me. You cannot offend me. You cannot make me feel any different about you, no matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter how you feel. I am going to feel exactly about you the way I do about the one that I inserted into you, and that will never, ever, 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 ever change. If you can grasp that, you can make boo-boos and live through it successfully without beating yourself up. And it, because I'm telling you, it's in the long haul, it, it's hard on you. It is very hard on you because it just beats the daylights out of you and, and you don't even realize you're being whooped. Um, who, I'm trying to think of who's... Bobby, she's had her hand. Go ahead. Let her rip, Liz. Oh, um, I was just... Uh, Jesus said you can't do not condemn the world but to save the world. Correct. So we're not condemned when we sin. And thank you, thank you. That's exactly another right. thing is that uh, um, I, I took too long. <laughs> when it comes back around, go ahead. Well, I I I I'll raise my hand again. Okay, just blurt it out. Don't don't even try to raise your hand. Just blurt, just blurt it right there. Yeah, just blurt it out. That way I won't. Mess you up. But the thing oh, yeah, it is, I know, I know, yeah. oh, it came back. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, when well, you're talking about being, like, it, for instance, we being condemned, me, you know, I was doing something that was so, so bad, you know, I knew it, but I, I couldn't control it. So I, I kind of was like angry. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I just felt like God was just looking at me like He's going to punish me or something. <laughs> and then, okay. But then, but, I, but then He, he, he changed me from that. He took it away. Correct. And so now I know that when we do sin, God, He really does forgive us and we don't have to feel bad or whatever. But Bobby, but I was. on the other hand, Bobby, even Charles Stanley said that 
uh, you reap what you sow more than you sow longer than you. We can be forgiven immediately by Correct. Christ, but the gears Correct. that we set in motion may take well, a long may be, time to that get may be the stopped. case. That's very possible. But the thing of it is, is lots of times it's not. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's, there's things you're going to do that are going to have ramific yeah. ramifications, unintended consequences, and all that kind of hoop. But the thing of it is, basically everyday life in Christ, don't beat yourself up over right. it. You, as you spiritually mature, which is a spiritual thing, hence the word spiritually mature, you're going to understand that there's a whole lot more to you that you don't recognize than, the, than you ever that you could ever conceive of. He wants you to be in a condition where when you make a mistake, you turn it right over to him and say, yep, you died for that one. I'm, I'm going on. And show me repentance. Yeah, show me. I mean, that's all it is. And that's basically what they're talking about. Now, <clears throat> And it talks, and that says, no work, no pay is involved because Christ picked up the tab at the cross. All right? No work, no pay. So, number 11, justice of God must judge our sins before the justice of God. And it is free to bless with 39 advantages. All right? You've got the list, advantages. All the things that you get in Jesus Christ when you accept Him. All right? One of them is peace. Peace. Peace, peace. <coughs> if we had to do a lesson every week on abiding for 10 years, you'd never get a handle on it. Because it is the most difficult thing in the world to do because of your human nature. But it is a very comfortable place to be. All right? Um, most of the time, it, when you're in the middle of turmoil, is, whether, is when you can identify how much peace you have in your life. Are you still making solid decisions in the midst of turmoil. Because that's when that's when the strength of your quote unquote being is on exhibit. Alright? You either fall apart or you don't fall apart. If you fall apart, you're mature if you, you got work to do. If you don't, you're maturing. You're maturing in Christ. You put more in his hands than there are in yours. Yes? Sir? Is it normal to go back sometime and then you know the end is Get back into more back into God. Oh sure. How many times have you taken classes over in college? Anybody do that on a regular basis? Please let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The thing of it is, is why did you have to do that? Um, when they keep a child back a year, why do they do that? As a mature, he's not ready to make the next step. I want you to understand something. If you're in a, in a Groundhog Day loop with a sin, <coughs> how do you get out of that? Just have a pray about it. Pray about it, number one. Search the scriptures, number two. <laughs> and number three, tell them, this is not of you. I am not getting this information. It is from my sin nature, from the world, or from Satan. No place else. It does not produce that kind of garbage. All right? That verse that tells you what you're supposed to dwell on? Things above? Yeah. What are you dwelling on up there? How many of you, you see this right here? You see this right here? Time and eternity? The minute you're in a loop and you're having a problem, do me a favor, redirect your brain power to that. Get it off of time and get it into eternity. Um, when I'm wrestling with stuff, lots of times early, early in the morning when my eyes won't stay shut, I make a list. Can you imagine a choleric making a list? Okay, mm -hmm. I make a list of the people I want to see in eternity. Okay, John Wayne is one of them. So you know, right? But I have a list of uncles and aunts. Dad, and all that, I, and I run that through my mind because you know what that does? That refocuses <coughs> me, who wants to think I'm a temporal being, into being the spiritual, eternal being that I really am in Christ right now. It's really a neat little program. And he'll list things. Um, does anybody remember how many times the word remember is in the Bible? I don't remember. 
<laughs> and that was coming like a freight train. Okay. <laughs> there are over 3,600 times it's said. <clears throat> All right, why did he say that? Because he wants you to remember. Because he wants you to remember. Now, what do you remember? <clears throat> How many of you go through life just remembering bad things? Well, you asked me one time, <laughs> you asked me one time how come I remembered bad things that happened as a child, and yes. I told you because there were so many of them, Okay. and I yes. didn't even tell you all the ones that were there. Thank you, Jesus. I know. Well, I'm just okay. saying. So, but the thing is, is it still that way? Are they subsiding at all? Well, I don't really think about them unless something triggers it, or okay. like one of my siblings said to me they thought I was the least messed up of our family. <laughs> I said, well, I think that's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, that's a compliment. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but, the thing, but the thing of it is, is all I'm telling you is now that there's other stimuli besides that, it can be displaced. Right. Okay. Good can displace it, and it will displace it if you get a constant diet of it. Go ahead. You know, one advantage, I think, if there is any, coming to the Lord late, mm -hmm. is that you remember those times when it was all self-justice. Okay. Righteousness, self-righteousness. Yes, ma'am. And so when something like that happens, you flee. Right? You can you identify it pretty quick and you want to get out of Dodge. Yes. fear you brought in, well, I visioned it in my mind, and I just jump right back in. Which is really a, a good thing because there's a lot of Christians that don't have that opportunity to self-identify. Yes. And what happens is, they, they like I've been a Christian since I was 12 so if I get self-righteous I have to have somebody point it out to me why I think that's normal you don't have the frame of reference like exactly you. at all I mean it's just not anywhere close so when I feel myself getting self-absorbed I disperse I, I do something else yeah, yeah. And, and it's yeah so there are benefits to come and leading the ball game well, you know you're fresh number one you know you got well, you have go. your foot in the fire. Yes, exactly. You know what it feels like. Sure, exactly. So, all right. But you also feel like there is an element, too, when you're saved, and you've got a lot of things that God had to forgive you for, besides sin in general. There are things now that you are saved that you want to make right. Correct. And it may take time to do that. Very well some may. things are worse than others. If you want to go mend fences and all that kind of good yeah. stuff, that's very beneficial. That's not harmful at all. But there are times when you need to keep your mouth shut, let it be water under the bridge, and don't go anywhere near it. All I'm trying to say is that when you're saved, you a lot of times you don't automatically blow off and take no, lightly you Correct. what you've done in this life. Correct. Even though you take it to Him and He sure. forgives you, He forgives you. But you live in a world that may not forgive you Correct. for a while. So that's why I say sometimes it's best just to keep your gap shut. The Lord will tell you when to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's somebody that I've offended, which God only knows how long that list is, <laughs> and if I come across them and I and I and I have that impression that it's that it's something that I may have, I, I apologize. I don't mind apologizing. But that being said, me when that occurs to me now, now I'm in a position to ask Him to please show me how to go about it or present the opportunity. Correct. I'm not trying to do it on my own because I know if Correct. I do, I'm just going to make things well, worse. in most cases, you're being talked to by the Holy Spirit. Right. Exactly. What's going to make you do that is listen. Correct. Right. Yes. And please understand something. The Holy Spirit won't say a word if, you don't, if, you, if He knows you're not listening. Right. I mean, why does He tell you all those verses in, in the Revelation? Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. That doesn't say, I'm going to shove it in your ear hole. I'm not going to shove it in your spirit. I'm going to tell you, if you want to listen, I'll be glad to talk to you. Just like the other one. Remember he says, he says he stands at the door and knocks? They use that for sinners on the outside trying to get in. That's not what it is at all. It's people that are in Christ that have stepped away and become carnal that we're always so concerned about. And they're having an opportunity to come back and function and, feel, and feel, uh, be associated with Christ. Knock on the door. He'll be glad to open it. And I found that voice to be much louder than my carnal voice, or my man voice. Or Correct. Whatever. It will be as long as you want to stay there. I mean, you can flush it out any chance, you, any, any way you want. Now, the mechanics of salvation are adjustment to the justice of God, which is salvation, all right, are summarized under, under the word grace. This is a policy, all right? Grace is a policy. This is how he does business. Okay, um, 
conduit right here. And this is grace, G-R-A-C-E. Every living thing that's on the outside of that is you. And everything you shoot at grace trying to get grace to work gets bounced off. If you think you can work for it, it's bounced off. If you think you can give money for it, bounced off. If you think you can teach a class for it and you're not called a Lord to do it, bounced off. If you think it's being nice to the, the lady across the street, bounced off. All that junk's gone. This is totally thrown to you. That's all it is. And that's what they're talking about here. Now, grace which equals no works. And I want you to understand something. You milling around in a, in a self-convicting morass. Meyer. Meyer. Okay. That's works. Yeah, I know. I totally know okay. it works. It's I mean, and it wears you out. Absolutely. Okay? Just so you know. All right? The policy of justice of God is blessing man. That's why when Liz says, I thought he was going to beat me and smoosh me and squish me because I was doing bad things. She's beyond that now. She realizes that's not his intent ever. You're his. He doesn't squish his. He doesn't want to squish his. He wants to bless his but it has to be under his protocol. Didn't we cover once years of, uh, ago, but once you become a Christian, you got a target on your back? Oh, good Lord, yes. But the, the world gives, puts... Well, that's um, somebody else shooting at you. I mean, you've ever been... Anybody, everybody went to school, right? How many of you ever seen the ones where the guy put the sign on the... You know, hey, how's it going, everybody? And you put, said, kick me on the back of them, you know? So he walked through the whole school the whole day and had that kick me sign, and every time somebody kicked him, he tried to figure out what it was. It's exactly what happens to you as a Christian. If you think Satan doesn't have a target for his slings and his arrows, you're gravely mistaken. But it's your response to those slings and arrows that makes all the difference. How you respond to them sets you up for either a function or a dysfunction. Entirely up to you. No if, answer, buts about it. And that's what they're talking about. <clears throat> all right? Under grace, God works. He is blessed. Blessing is imputed righteousness. And please understand something. G W. Good works. God works. Now they would like him to say good works. Some of them would like to say good George Washington, but that's not. God does the work. I mean, it always makes it sound like I just have to stand here and just get rained on. Well, once it starts functioning in you, he'll tell you how to move your feet. How do you think? A righteous man's steps are ordered. How do you think that happens? Oh, I think of where I'm going and God lets me, God shows me. No. He moves you. He tells you how to get there. He tells you what to do to get there. And the fact that you're asking him, you've already jumped 50,000 hurdles because the rest of the world never asks. And the moment you ask, what happens to you and him? Um, what is one of the things a wife always tells a husband? You that just don't you, listen. You, there you go. We never talk anymore. What's there to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> I understand why you're grieved. That's okay. <laughs> but understand, that is basically when, when we don't talk anymore. Well, please understand something. The, the, what you have with the Lord Jesus Christ is even more intimate than what you have with your wife or your kids or anything. And if you don't talk to him, okay, you're the one that suffers. I understand women have how many words during the course of a day? You really upwards, want an answer for that? Upwards, no, no, no. They've already calculated it out. Upwards to over 50,000 words a day they have to use. Well, your wife got one done. Is he still married or is he divorced now? And, and Well, I'm not sure the guy that did the study. I don't know where he's at right now. He could be on an island counting words. I don't know. Yeah. But the thing of it is, with, with, with a man, it's somewhere around fifteen to 20,000. So you see the discrepancy? So how do I... How, and, and understand something. There's only one guy in the whole flipping universe that can broach that, that chasm. And that's Jesus Christ. I can't. Okay? 
Do you realize how quiet it was when the troops were gone for four days? I'll bet I didn't say a hundred words. Except when they call on the phone. You understand that? You realize what a challenge that is for somebody like me? But whose hands do I put it in? I mean, I had to learn to say, okay, how was your day? And understand, I had to get a rundown of the day, even though I didn't have a clue as to what she was talking about. I mean, she's doing computer junk on the thing, and I don't even know how to turn them on. So how do these conversations go? They go focused on her. Okay? I focus on him. Not the rest of the world, him. What are we doing today? Why did you take me this way? Why am I driving down this trail this way? Why am I going over here? Why did I stop at this house? And he gives me answers as I go. It sounds kind of loony, just like what's her name said. If we're talking to God and he talks back, we're probably crazy oh, yeah. or insane or whatever it is. Joy Behar. 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 That's her, Behar. How can you tell when the Holy Spirit is talking to you? How? Um, no, most of the time, no. no. Well, you do, but most of the time I function in it, and when I'm done with it, it is crystal clear that he made me stop there. Or do that, or say that. Correct. Most of the time, not, not always. It's not like, oh, there's a billboard that says, oh, stop over here at this house. No, it's not that. That still small voice that you're listening to, you listen to it. Then when you function in it, what have I done? I've taken doctrine, turned it into experiential knowledge, and functioned in it. And when I function in it, what have I done? I've been obedient to God. When I've been obedient to God, he shifts down answers, and the answers are always, invariably, when I go into a house. I was just talking about you. Well, again, it's like, uh, like what happened yesterday. Yes. Okay? You know, at the moment, you're not thinking, well, the Holy Spirit's guiding me to ask yeah. you what's going on. And then you call. No, no. It, for me... That was, an, that was, after it was over, I went, wow, look what the Holy Spirit just did. Correct. Yeah. You know, it, and, the more, and the more you do that, right. the more you want to do it. Because it's really neat to see how he's taken. Um, anybody ever put a puzzle together without the lid? Peeking at the lid to see where something went, yeah. where a piece goes every now and again? Yeah. That's normal. Is that normal for puzzle people? Yeah, we see. Okay. If you don't have a lid, what are you doing? You put them all together, and then here's the deal. You put it all together, and then you go, wow, look at what this looks like. I didn't ever have the lid to see what it is, but now I see what it is. Yeah. And now I see all the pieces that had to come together to make it look like that. That's exactly how you walk with the Holy Spirit is. I run into some of them. Some of them are smart, Alex. They don't worry about the lid. They turn the whole puzzle upside down and put the thing together upside down. That's... I'm now he's just bragging. Let's call, call autism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's the yeah. They see things entirely different than I do. Yeah. Yes, sir, sir. Well, one big proponent in uh, listening to the Holy Spirit is going out with the armor of God and running everything through the filter, the Christian filter. When you're doing that, you will get talked to, and it'll be loud and clear. It, it, I think. Not audible. Because yeah. we're not insane, but it, yeah, it, I mean, it's it, the, it becomes whatever very brain, clear. Or whatever voice is in your head, the Holy Spirit is louder than that. It, it's, it's so it's a, it's a learning curve. Yeah, you it learn really to is. listen. It truly is a learning curve. Um, say you're putting an application in for a job somewhere. How do you know whether that's the job that you're supposed to have? We're praying for Julie. She goes Tuesday for a, an interview with Lockheed. Is this what the Lord wants for her? I don't know. But on Thursday of last week, she drove her truck to work without oil. Hence, she is a pedestrian. And then you back it all the way up. What, what put it in her mind to even apply? Ooh, I'll give it even better than that. You know what she's been looking at? New trucks. <laughs> you need a job. I'm telling you. I don't. I, and I do not question this stuff anymore at all. I just start putting it down, and then I, I go back and do the overview <laughs> that you do out of the cake, and say, okay, boy, this program really works well. I think I'm not going to mess with it. And I do that. So I'm just telling you that he says, look, you belong to me. I have a desire to bless you. Get the living daylights out of the way, would you? It's kind of weird, but so you were talking before about, the, you know, we have that bullseye on us and mm -hmm. sling, slinging arrows and other people are and everything. Well, for everything, there's always a, an equal, you know, there's an opposite. Mm -hmm. So every time that we have a day like that where things just fall in place or you make a phone call and talk to somebody, things work out, those are the arrows for the good guys. 
I mean, we have arrows to sling too, and the, the enemy yes. doesn't like that, but that's what we're trying to accomplish. Correct. We're, we're in a battle. And you realize the moment you pick up doctrine, it makes it harder for Satan to hit you. You realize that? Have you ever seen the war movies, any of the cowboy movies, when somebody's shooting at them? What do they do? They never run out of bullets. Well, they know that. That is kind of strange. But they zig and zag. And another thing. I think the Holy Spirit is the best zigger and zagger there is in Dodge. Because he can. He said, no, be over here, be over here, be over here, be over here. Here comes an arrow, get over here. And when he does that, you think, wow, I sure was smart there, wasn't I? No, you weren't smart at all. It's just you being pushed in the right direction. And it's, and it's a pleasure to know that you're, you've got a, a, a Lord that even wants to push you out of the way. All right? Or it could be, uh, uh, if it gets really bad, it could be Jobish, where he's going, oh, watch yeah. my God. See Heck what yeah. he does. Yep. I was just told the other day, why do you drive that truck so long? What is there a session with my truck? <laughs> I said, I like it. But, but, I said, yeah, I know you're going to say, look at it. And, and I said, and I do, and I love every inch of it. I know that the ding in the roof is from Dad throwing 2 by 12s on top of it from Andrew. I know the crunch in the sides where the ding-dong at Home Depot crushed the side with the forks. I know the whole truck. <coughs> Sounds like they're not the only ones with an obsession over your truck. I know. <laughs> but the thing of it is, is he said, well, I never thought of it that way. I said, it's part of me, dude. What, what, what are you doing on my truck? And, hey, Bobby, and, that's part of that R up there in grace. It's the riches of him. Correct. That R stands for riches. Yes. And this riches is an 87 GMC. Yeah. <laughs> right? Just so you know. All right? So no that's just... Payments. That's just the thing of it is, is, as far as I'm concerned, he's blessed me with that, and I just enjoy it. I don't care what comes down. I don't know what he has next. I'm sure this poor thing's going to die. I can see through the floor. I see, buy, the, I see the road going by. If you buy into the program, he will put in your mind to you get a new truck. Exactly. If, it, if you, yeah. Exactly. So I leave it up to him, and I drive what he gives me, and I am tickled to death with it. So, all right, we out of time? Of course we are. Um, prayer theme, would you? Thank you. If you add one more thing, just yes. like just like Julie, I've got a job interview on Tuesday. Yes, sir. Oh. So, All right. Give it a shot. Hey. Yeah. I'm okay if I get it. I'm okay if I don't. Is it, Is it in San Diego, or <laughs> California? No, no. It's, oh, okay. It, no, it's here. It's here. It's up to be a challenge. Good. All right. Put it yeah. in. Okay, Julie, I'm trying to build that retirement fund up higher, right? I'm ready for a new challenge. Any other interviews? Everybody else is good where you're at right now? I got an interview with my cats. Okay. <laughs> that could be a squirrely one. Yeah. All right. Pudu Pal. I got all the folks on here: Ken, Tom, Amy, James, Mrs. Helton, Pam, Kay. Church staff and services, military folks, because it's a holiday. I got Shirley and Larry stuff on here. Um, David McMillan's mom. I got mom. Just continue praying for her. Julie's interview. Al's interview. Um, I appreciated the cold weather. We had fire for three days. It was exceedingly nice. All right. And folks traveling, because Carol's still in Georgia, and other people will probably be chasing her out for the holidays. I don't know where you might be going. The Easter services that they've got coming on here. And... There's a paper here that if you can help them um, Easter Sunday for Usher. ushers, I think probably offering and stuff, I'll put this somewhere. I guess I can put it on that table over there or whatever. But if anybody can help, put your name on here and we'll put it in the box and ship it back in just if you're going to be at that. Whatever particular service, you can sign up for the one that, that you normally go to, the 9.30 or the 11. They got all the greeters that they needed. They just need a few more ushers, I think. Okay? And Fallensby, Alf, where Al's parents, oh, okay, need to find a new place. Yeah, the one they're in is closing down, so okay. need to find and, a new place. And Josh is job hunting in Brevard. He's still looking. Um, he's actually, happy he, where he's at. So. He found, I mean, he wants a job here, but he also found one that's down in Jupiter, Wasaki, so he's going to apply for that one, too. Okay. Which isn't Brevard, but it is in Florida, so he, he's hey, going to take it. I sent him a picture of a beautiful blue sky with a flag waving in the in the foreground, and, and I sent it to him, and he sent me a picture of him driving down the road with 
a foot of snow on either side of the road. He said, this is sick. So anyway, so we keep them busy. So at any rate, just keep praying. And the ear thing, uh, more better? You said yeah. one of them is almost working pretty good? Yes, yes. And the other one's not? The preparations have closed, though. Is that what you told yes, me? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Susan? Yes. Okay. So and she can only feign deafness with her husband for just a little bit longer. So. <laughs> the doctor said maybe three months. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that's, right. that's a good window of time there. <laughs> so And Bobby, next next week being Easter, there's a wonderful song. Can I give you these words? Yeah, let her rip. Yeah. Donnie probably knows it. <clears throat> it's called, Oh, What a Savior. Once I was straying in sin's dark valley, no hope within could I see. They searched through heaven and found the Savior to save a poor lost soul like me. Oh, what a Savior, oh, hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were nail-scarred. His side was riven. He gave his lifeblood for even me. Death's chilling water I'll soon be crossing. His hand will lead me safely home. And I'll join the chorus in that bright city, and I'll sing it up there forever and evermore. Oh, what a Savior, oh, hallelujah. His heart was broken on Calvary. His hands were nail-scarred. His side was riven. He gave his lifeblood for even me. I know that song. It's great, Tom. Oh, what a Savior. Can't beat it. I'll hang with him the whole time. Anybody wants to sign up? I can't say they're going to sing that song, but you might hear something. All right, let's pray and I'll turn you loose. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for the ones that are here today, Lord. Just watch over them, protect them, bring them back safely. Pray that you be with the ones that are here. Just bless every family that's been consistent in your, in your service and in your study. Be with us as we are here next week. Watch over us. Allow us to get things done in you. Allow us to go where you would have us go. And above all, pray that people will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on a very, very glorious day, and that you came back and got us all on that day. In Christ's name, amen. amen. All right.